Hello, welcome to mini lecture two on the Chesapeake colonies. In this lecture, we will be focusing on life in colonial Virginia, primarily, and to a lesser extent, Maryland. The Virginia Company of London over undertook the effort to establish a colony um, in what became known as Virginia. No single person had enough money to develop a colony in America on their own. A group of wealthy merchants created a joint stock company. Anyone could invest in the company by purchasing shares, and this was the Virginia Company. The Virginia Company was founded in 1606 and received a charter from King James I. In 1606, three ships carrying 106 men and boys landed in what they named Jamestown. There they constructed a fortress. They were aware that there were Native Americans nearby, so they constructed a fortress for their protection. And the early settlers of Jamestown wanted to find gold and silver. The idea of the company was to find gold and silver make, and make a quick profit, essentially. The problem was they didn't find any gold and silver. Also, many of, at least some of the uh, individuals who traveled to Jamestown were gentlemen who traditionally didn't work. Uh, in England, this made some sense. Um, England had a sufficient labor force, so you could have gentlemen who didn't engage in labor. But with the small number of settlers, it was very important that everyone uh, contribute uh, by performing labor. Other problems that the Jamestown colonists encountered included contaminated drinking water. They effectively settled in a swamp. Um, so the, the water was brackish and included some salt and was not uh, healthy to drink. And also uh, the colonists suffered from malaria. <coughs> so an another problem that they encountered was poor leadership. For some time, there was really no effective leadership within the Jamestown colony. The person who emerges as a leader in Jamestown is John Smith. John Smith established trade with the Native Americans, which was crucial to the survival of the early Jamestown settlers. He was the first to map the Chesapeake Bay. And in 1608, he took control of the ruling council of Jamestown and instituted military discipline. He forced all colonists to engage in agriculture rather than spending all their time searching for gold. Unfortunately, John Smith was wounded when the gunpowder that he was carrying ignited. He suffered a serious leg wound and had to return to England. From 1609 to 1611, Jamestown really lacked capable leadership. And this led to what was known as the Starving Time. In the winter of 1610-1611, the colony was faced with starvation, and it seems quite clear from the bones that have been recovered that colonists engaged in cannibalism in order to survive. Another problem was the relationship with the local Native Americans, the Powhatan, um, had deteriorated and conflict had erupted between the Europeans and the natives. The settlers actually sought to abandon Jamestown. They traveled um, to the coast, the next European ship that arrived, they intended to return to England. But meanwhile, the company had sent over a ship with Governor Lord de Loire, and um, they undertook an effort to redevelop the, the settlement and the colony. Virginia did expand gradually as a colony. Sir Edwin Sandys instituted important reforms in 1618. The company was funded in part through a lottery system. The headright system was crucial. Under the headright system, anyone who travel, anyone who paid for their own travel to the Jamestown colony would receive 50 acres of land. In addition, for each servant that one brought over with them, one would receive 50 acres of land. By 1618, there were 700 settlers in Virginia. 
From 1618 to 1623, there were 5,000 immigrants to the colony. Three significant things happened in 1619. The House of Burgesses was established. This was the first legislative body established in British colonial North America. Women were brought over um, to the colony as they began to move towards more permanent settlement. And in 1619, the first ship of African slaves arrived. This was a Dutch ship that had gotten caught in a storm at sea and was desperate and came into port at Jamestown and traded 19 slaves in return for food and repairs, supplies to their, for their ship and repairs to their ship. The English settlements expanded into Algonquin lands and this led to conflict. There was a large-scale war between the English and the natives between 1622 and 1632, and conflict erupted once again in 1644. In 1624, King James I revoked the charter issued to the London Company. Virginia was now transformed into a royal colony, a colony of the crown. The crown appointed a governor and a council to rule Virginia, and the House of Burgesses was officially dissolved. In spite of the fact that it was officially dissolved, it continued to meet informally from 1629 to 1639, and in 1639, King Charles recognized the legitimacy of the House of Burgesses. This gave local landowners some say over their own government, effectively. Many of the people who came to colonial Virginia were indentured servants. They were impoverished citizens of England who were transported to Virginia as indentured servants. Um, essentially, poor individuals who were struggling in England would typically agree to sign a contract of indenture. A wealthy patron would pay for their voyage, and the indentured servants would then work from four to seven years in the service of their, quote, master. The person who paid for their voyage, and their quote master would receive 50 acres of land under the head rate system. The voyage was terrible and there was a very high death rate. Um, not everyone came by choice. Um, poor children in port cities were often simply kidnapped and forced onto ships and brought to Virginia as indentured servants. Indentured servants were treated quite poorly. They were often beaten and brutalized by their masters. Female indentured servants were often raped by their masters as well. There was a very high suicide rate amongst indentured servants. An indentured servant could not marry without their master's permission, and the master generally would not grant permission. Masters could break up the families of indentured servants. Indentured servants could not vote or own property. Most received no land or tools at the end of their service. In the 17th century, most of the indentured servants were ethnically English, and the 18th century, most were either Irish or German. There were growing tensions in colonial Virginia between the wealthy landowners and the servants. Several uprisings of indentured servants took place. Many servants escaped from their masters and ran away to the hill country in the west. Servants organized work stoppages and protested for poor food and conditions. Most of the indentured servants who survived and were freed um, had no land and became tenant farmers. William Berkeley was royal governor of Virginia from 1642 to the 1670s. In 1644, Berkeley established a peace treaty with the local Native Americans establishing the Blue Ridge Mountains as the western boundary of white settlement. However, freed indentured servants were always in search of land, and they moved west of the Blue Ridge Mountains in search of land. Not surprisingly, those who moved west of the Blue Ridge Mountains came into conflict with Native Americans. The wealthy landowners in eastern Virginia viewed the settlers in the Blue Ridge Mountain region with contempt. Um, they referred to them as hill people, the term hillbillies emerged. They viewed them as poor, uneducated former servants 
who were causing trouble with the natives by moving west. But of course, there is no land available in the east for these individuals. Nathaniel Bacon was a cousin of Governor Berkeley, and Bacon emerged as the leader of the Western settlers and advocated conflict with the Native Americans. In 1675, a major conflict erupted between the natives and the Western settlers. War erupted. In 1676, there is a drought pushing many of the Western settlers further into poverty. Bacon organized the Western settlers to fight Native Americans. Governor Berkeley branded Bacon an outlaw and orders his arrest. 2,000 Virginians march on the, the capital of Virginia and secure Bacon's release through a mass demonstration. In July of 1676, about 100 years before the American Revolution, Nathaniel Bacon issues a Declaration of the People denouncing the government of Virginia for failing to protect Western farmers from Native Americans. In 1676, Bacon leads a group of men in an attack on Jamestown. The colonial government is forced to flee the city. Bacon's followers were primarily poor Western farmers, indentured servants, and slaves. Bacon died of disease during the rebellion, and ultimately the colonial government was victorious. 23 of the rebel leaders were executed, and a thousand regular troops were brought in from England to prevent further unrest. Many wealthy planters in the wake of Bacon's rebellion chose to abandon the system of indentured servitude. From the perspective of the planters, the problem was in, with indentured servants was that they eventually became free, and then they wanted land. Instead, the Virginia planters turned increasingly towards slavery. Um, from the perspective of the planters, African slaves could be enslaved forever. They never had to be granted their freedom. Native Americans were forced to sign a treaty giving up land west of the Blue Ridge Mountains in 1677 to white settlers. In terms of Maryland, George Calvert, an English lord, negotiated with the English crown for a charter to found a colony. The Calverts were Catholic, and Catholics at this point were being severely persecuted in England. Uh, the Calverts envisioned Maryland as a refuge for Catholic migrants. In 1632, King Charles I granted a charter. In 1634, two ships of settlers arrived in the New World, purchasing land from the Yakimo Indians founding Baltimore. The Charter granted Cecilius, Lord Baltimore, absolute power over the colony. Lord Baltimore owned six million acres of land, and all the residents of the colony were his, his feudal vassals. Lord Baltimore attempted to establish a feudal system in Maryland, but this failed. Ultimately, a House of Delegates was established in Maryland in 1635, a form of representative government. Lord Baltimore wanted to attract Protestant settlers as well as Catholic settlers, and he instructed all acts of the Roman Catholic religion to be done as privately as possible to prevent conflict. In fact, a majority of the settlers were Protestants. In the mid-17th century, there were armed conflicts between Protestants and Catholics in Baltimore. In Maryland, a headright system was established similar to that in Virginia, Initially, most of the laborers in Maryland were indentured servants. Most freed servants remained landless and poor throughout their lives. And class tensions emerged. Between 1650 and 1689, there were five revolts against the government of Maryland. And partly in response to this, in the late 17th century, slavery was introduced as the principal system of labor in the colony. That concludes the presentation. Thank you for your time.